Hello everyone, this is Phoenix Tremaine, and today we're going to be talking about Bold and the Beautiful, The Weekend Review. So if this video does good numbers, I will continue this on a weekly basis. So let me know how you like uh, the Bold and Beautiful commentary, and um, do all the YouTube things like subscribe. Uh, that also helps and also shows me that you're interested in the video, especially if you're already a subscriber. Go on ahead and hit that like button, it's free to do. And um, we have a membership with early access to videos, including, you know, videos like this in our lives on Fridays where we have a whole show and have a good old time talking about all four of the shows. And if you can't make it as a member, you can always watch the playback. So now we're going to get into the commentary for Bold and the Beautiful. Probably going to be my shortest commentary because they don't have a whole lot of storylines. So we're going to begin with what I refer to as poor Paris, but thinking about it, it's more like poor Paris and Thomas because they brought uh, Thomas back for this little short storyline to help set hope free and keep her more focused on uh, Finn. But um, Paris and Thomas have no chemistry. Uh, I know the people that don't want Hope and Thomas together are hoping and praying that Thomas and Paris will get married, and which will only mean he'll eventually cheat on her with Hope. But um, I don't know what the show is doing in regards to uh, bringing him back for like two weeks just to send him away again. And um, I guess they brought him back for sweeps. Uh, to get the ratings up, but but it sounds like they'll they'll get married soon. But I'm guessing soon is like more like November sweeps. But we'll see we'll see what happens with that. Um, but of course, anybody with hopes of Thomas in Paris um, should pay attention to this scene. Thomas proposing for the third time. So let's play a game of what if. What if Hope said yes? What if she was so jealous? She was like, you know what? Uh, I want you back. I want Douglas back. I want to be a family with you. If I got to wear a ring to do it, so be it. So if she actually said yes to Thomas, we know he would have dumped Paris in a heartbeat. My secret hope, if, you know, I'm a writer, so sometimes I try to see, think about how I would have written it, and how I would have written it would have been Thomas and Paris were working together, that Thomas came up with a scheme to force Hope to realize that uh, he's the man for her, and that she would have accepted that third proposal uh, because uh, she'd be so jealous of Paris. But that's not what happened, because when we saw them just talking amongst themselves, Paris and they were just talking normal. There was no scheme. But it's a soap opera. It, sh it should have been a scheme. Um, we're going to move on to the whole reason why this is happening, to set Hope free. And she's like, OK, you know. I'm I'm good, <laughs> and let me go find Finn. Well, Finn actually found her because um, she was in Steffi's office for some reason working instead of her little workroom. But uh, yeah, Finn's her shoulder to cry on, you know, her voice of reason, and for her to uh, gaze longingly into his eyes and occasionally get a headache so that she can get a massage. And stick it to Steffi. So, but but keep in mind, Finn is just a new Liam. Normally it's Liam, Hope, and Steffi triangle. But now we barely see Liam, and Finn is the new triangle. Um, but how many times have we seen things like this play out uh, between Hope, Steffi, and, and Liam? It's just insert Finn take out Liam. I felt like Steffi was being a bad sister because she couldn't wait for Thomas to go back to Europe. She's so busy trying to stick it to 
Pope by getting Thomas and um, their son Douglas away from her that she doesn't realize she's just setting things up so that uh, Hope can, can go after her husband. I definitely think that is going to be a twist. I definitely think um, something's going to happen probably by November sweeps between Hope and uh, Finn. And this will lead to Liam and Steffi uh, either having an affair, thinking that Hope and Finn are having an affair, or vice versa. So uh, I figure by November sweeps, because a lot of the big things is going to happen, going to happen during the sweeps period, which would be February sweeps, uh, May sweeps, July sweeps, and November sweeps. We just have a little bit longer wait because it used to be August sweeps, but for whatever reason, they change August sweeps to July sweeps. And July sweeps this year is going to end on July 24th. And that's why I say we'll probably get the rest of the stuff happen that's going to happen uh, in November sweeps because in August they're going to Europe, so that's going to happen. And Tom Arnold's going to be the, the pilot, so so I, I figure like that's going to be a whole whole month or close to a month of uh, whatever they're going to be doing in Europe. Um, and. Thomas in Paris wedding can't be in Europe because they're going to do the Forest of Mansion. So we're going to move on uh, to, and you can tell me in the comment section if you think that Steffi's being a bad sister, uh, trying to convince him uh, to stay out of uh, out of town just to keep him away from hope. And um, I kind of already talked about this: the weddings going to be at the Forest of Mansion. These scenes to me were a lot of fast forwarding because I didn't care about, you know, any of these scenes or Brooke and Donna scenes. And they're just talking about the wedding that's not going to happen. So I uh, fast forward it. And there's, of course, the goodbye that I briefly talked about where Hope and Tom, where Hope gives uh, Thomas her blessing. You can do whatever you want to do with Paris and Douglas. You know, we'll figure out, you know, the uh, which continent Douglas will be on because <laughs> he was like, yeah, we'll ma I'll make sure you get to see Douglas. Yeah. Even though he's on an entirely different continent. But OK. OK. Yeah, that, that sounds reasonable. Not. Um, but like I said, this was all to set up Hope Revenge Plot to. Uh, take Finn from Steffi. So, you know, you see Steffi trying to hold on to Finn for dear life, not realizing she is actually slowly but surely pushing the storyline along for Hope and Finn. Um, and this screenshot right here lets you know just how obvious it is. Now, the writing to me needs a little work. Well, a lot of work. But for, because it seems like this, it would make sense, more sense, especially since Brooke and Seth are now Cosios. Why was Brooke trying to basically um, derail any feelings Hope has for Thomas? And like, oh no, you don't want these feelings. These feelings for Thomas, they're just fake because you really want Finn. That's pretty much what she was saying. And you know, but, but, you know, you also can't have Finn. So on and she should have been asking her to go on ahead and, and you know, maybe explore them feelings with Thomas since Round Ridge, she acts like she's totally okay with Thomas and Hope being together. But knowing that she's uh, got her eyes set on Finn, it would have made more sense for her to try to, like, say, yeah, go ahead and explore them feelings for Thomas especially before he gets married, and then you'll be dealing with trying to sell another married man. Now we're going to move on to the mystery of what happened to Tom and now Hollis. And we don't have good suspects with this because, you know, they had Lee and Jack being cagey. Um, Jack was acting like he wasn't there when Tom fell out. And so the questions become, why are they lying? 
you know, what's in it for Lee? What's in it for Jack? Why would they target Tom? Do they, is they, are they going to go back to that other theory that Finn is actually Luna's father, not Thomas? And, uh, well, I'm saying Thomas, but I'm talking about Tom. And why would they name Tom, Tom, when, and making it so they have two Thomases on the show? Is that one is using the nickname and one isn't? That doesn't make any sense. But anyway, um, yeah, Jack is definitely a throwaway suspect. If it turns out that Jack is the one that got rid of Tom and Hollis, I mean, he's barely on the show. It wouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, I think if they're going to keep Poppy around, then Lee, definitely, they want her always in her sister's face. But the two of them, if they know that Finn is really Luna's dad, then, and Thomas starts trying to, you know, or I keep saying Thomas, but Tom starts uh, creating inquiries, you know, about the, the paternity and there's the paternity test, that that's the only thing I could think of as a reason, a motive for why they'd want to um, get rid of Tom to shut him up. Because this is, this, this uh, mystery was not created uh, with a whole lot of layers. It felt like it was like, a, oh, it sweeps. Let's do something big to get the fans watching again. So uh, we also had this weird scene. Normally, Sheila wants to know everything that's going on about everything. And whereas Hollis was trying to tell her about the letters in the backpack, which are going to, you know, of course, be Tom saying he's Luna's real dad. She didn't want to hear it. I feel like she already knew. I think Sheila already found the backpack and knew what was in it. And she didn't want Thomas, like, telling her about it because she wanted to deal with it later. So Sheila was acting really suspicious as well. And then um, we've got this whole thing with why did they make sure before Hollis passed away that uh, Luna knows Hollis? They, she even has his number, that they're supposed to be friends, even though they have never really been in scenes together. They never built that up or anything. So it makes me wonder, like, what's going on? Why would they have that plot point there? Because clearly, when the lights went out, Hollis uh, saw someone that didn't make him feel nervous. It was someone who's like, oh, um, I need somebody to talk to about these, about uh, Tom backpack. You know, so whoever it is, it was someone he knew. And then the, what actually, see, certain things you can't say on YouTube. So I'm just going to say what actually made him pass away is uh, whatever's in that bottle he's drinking, whether um, because he passed away for the same reason that Tom passed away. And I had said it last week that uh, Sheila was going to find a body and it would probably be Hollis because I couldn't think of anyone in the cast other than Hollis that <clears throat> would be El Giordino. And they would feel like, okay, this is a character we can get rid of. Um, it's not a big deal. And I was right. So we're going to go ahead and look at the initial suspects for um, who got rid of Tom slash Hollis. And of course, I already talked about Lee and Jack. But for some reason, they're making Justin a suspect. I don't know why. I don't know why he was there. Um, I feel like it's a red herring. Um, but because whatever reason, just like Jack and even to a certain extent, Lee, um, Justin, they clearly feel like he's a throwaway character because they don't use him. So if he did it for whatever random reason, um, yeah, I'm sure they'll eventually get around exploring that and him having a reason to have a grudge against Tom, but I don't think that he did it. 
Then we have Poppy. The thing with Poppy is, um, if it's Poppy, that's 100% bad writing because Poppy is the most obvious suspect. Poppy has the most motive that we know about. But they also showed that Poppy cared about Tom at one point. They created them flashbacks from the past. So is Poppy really, you know, that vindictive or um, desperate to keep the secret that she would get rid of Tom? Um, if they want to keep up uh, Poppy and Katie triangle with Bill, the answer would be no. But if they really see her as a throwaway character, then the answer would be yes. But I'm also leaning into Sheila because when Sheila went on ahead and was talking with Deacon, Deacon was upset about Hollis and Sheila was just looking at him. She was upset initially at finding <clears throat> the body, but why was she looking so strange at the end of the episode, just staring at Deacon? Like, what will Sheila part be? Will it be that she knows about the letters? Will it be that she's actually the one that got rid of Hollis and Tom? Uh, previously, we had scenes where Tom was <clears throat> trying to interfere with Deacon and Sheila's marriage. And, you know, Sheila was upset and she did threaten him. But then, you know, Tom seemingly came around because Deacon was helping him so much. He was ready to let it go. So I don't really feel like that's a motive either. But I just want for a minute to have a little fun and to do a character. It's a wild theory uh, in the Who Done It, But I think that this would be good writing. I know some of you want good characters to be good and bad characters to be bad. There's no gray area. But if I was writing this based on the head writer saying these are all the things that have to happen, uh, my person who did it would actually be Luna. And I know that's going to be shocking to a lot of people because Luna has been a good girl, blah, 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 blah. Good girls go bad all the time on soaps. But if Luke, first off, it's because they established that Hollis and Luna knew each other, that whoever showed up at Il Giardino knew about uh, it was somebody that Hollis knew and was comfortable with, and that um, the, the other than Poppy, the number one person who would want this paternity secret to stay a secret, it would be Luna. Luna loves Bill. You know, I'm sure she's enjoying the money and living in the mansion. And if Luna had to choose between dads, between Bill and Tom, uh, I think Luna would definitely choose uh, Bill. Also, her fast-forwarded relationship with RJ, she definitely could be her mother's daughter where, you know, she saw RJ was a forester and was like, okay, we're going to get this money. <laughs> so, you know, Luna could be, you know, her mother's daughter, just like Hope is, you know, her mother's daughter, you know, it, as far as behavior. But I think that would be a truly wild twist that would, would shock a lot of fans. But if you think about it, it would make sense if, Somehow off camera, you know how they kind of rewrite stuff. Um, Tom made some sort of contact with Luna or Luna overheard a conversation that Poppy had or, or Lee had or, or somebody and found out that Tom could be her dad. Um, I don't know how she would get her hands on, I don't want to say the word, but the stuff that was put in the drinks. But this is a... This is not an aggressive uh, type of, it wasn't a weapon used. There wasn't, you know, a fight. Um, this is sort of like classically what they would say versus, you know, a man who done it and a woman who done it. This definitely seems like a very passive uh, type of, I don't know, I'm not saying women can't be 
aggressive or that V word, but I just feel like the person who did it is definitely going to be a woman. And it's because of the means that was used. Now, of course, the means that was used was that D word um, for the overdose. So it definitely could be Poppy because Poppy always has, you know, a little something, something, some mints or something that, you know, so we know she has access. Lee's a doctor. We, I uh, mean, put this picture up because I'm looking at him, but you can't see him. So Lee is a doctor. So she definitely has access to what's needed to get rid of Hollis and Tom. And Luna may have gone in her mother's stash. They're, they are living together. So if I was writing it, I would make it Luna. And I don't really feel like Luna is really a character we need. But, you know, that romance with RJ hasn't, hasn't gone anywhere. The little, you know, mint storyline that had her end up with Zende, that didn't end up in anywhere. You know, I, I'm like, bring Zoe back. <laughs> you know, but anyway, that is the end of the commentary. Let me know uh, who you think did it. Um, I threw out that wild theory of Luna. So if you don't think that Luna could potentially be a suspect, and like I said, it's a wild theory. It doesn't mean it'll actually happen. Um, but would you think it would be fun for Luna to be the one who had done it and shock everybody? Or the other suspects that we have, um, Lee, Jack, Justin, and Poppy, and Sheila, would you prefer it to be one of them? And if so, which one would you want it to be? Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.